After the 2012 election of President Barack Obama, the Republican National Committee went through an exhaustive study on what the party needs to do uh, to broaden its tent. And the conclusion was simply messaging had to change and emphasis had to change in reaching out to non-traditional GOP voters. So one of the things that they have done is launched a recent advertising campaign laying out exactly who different Republicans are and showing a much more diverse view. But what else must be done beyond the commercial, but also when it comes to candidates as well as issues. Joining us right here on News One Now is a chair of the Republican National Committee, Ryan Priebus. Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing great. Right, Thank you for here. having me. Nice to see you again. Likewise, too. likewise. So let's, let's jump right into sure. it. Um, clearly, when you look at the numbers, when you look at on the national level, look at right. congressional races, African Americans do not support Republicans. The numbers are not significant, significant as well. When you did this examination, what did you see that was the main reason why the GOP has had difficulty reaching black voters. Well, I think the fundamental problem we have as a national party is that we've become a party that showed up about once every four years, five months before an election. And the fundamental change that we're making, I think if you, if you hear it, in putting people in the communities early, having a four-year program uh, in black communities across America, paying for it, having full-time people there, I think is going to is going to make our prospects much better in the future. I think our issues were more, are more fundamental than just any sort of policy discussion that we could have. My view is that if you don't have a conduit and a presence in the community, you can, get the, you can have the policy discussions all day long, but you're not going to move the numbers in the community. Now, this doesn't sound earth-shattering to a lot of people, but I, I believe, like you know, Vince Lombardi said, the only place that success comes before work is in the dictionary. We can't be a part-time party. And, and I really believe that's what's happened. And those are the things that we're trying to change. And fundamentally, you can't point to a Republican National Committee that has put more people on the ground in African-American communities earlier than this Republican National Committee. It's a very serious effort. One of the things that I've always <clears throat> said, and that is, uh, not only is it, is it, also, it, it is also still a question of policy, what are those issues that are being advocated, uh, but also having the conversation with African Americans uh, who are all, who are already not Republican. And so, you know, one of my complaints has always been uh, when it comes to party, not just party leaders, but also members of Congress is, you can't talk about rich, wanting to get black votes if you don't talk to black folks. There has to be well, that dialogue to say, what is it that you want, not just I want your vote? And there's a learning curve there. Um, you know, I spent 12 years as a litigator in Milwaukee. Uh, I spent my summer uh, law clerking experience at the NAACP Legal Defense Fund in Los Angeles. I think it takes time, but I think that if you immerse yourself in a community, it's, uh, you're, you're right. That's how you learn where people are coming from. And when it comes to voting rights, when it comes to access, when it comes to things uh, like the Voting Rights Act and the discussion that's taking place across the country, I think bringing the, de the depth and the breadth of that knowledge is really important in order to understand where people are coming from. Here's one thing that I don't quite understand. One of the issues, I, I had a major civil rights leader tell me that they have gotten more headway, more support on the issue of sentencing reform from Republican governors than Democratic governors. And I said on the show when uh, when I had the uh, interim CEO of the NAACP here, I said, I would think that's one of the issues where if I'm the RNC or GOP, I'm having a joint news conference with the NAACP saying, here's an issue where we agree, where you have disproportionate sentencing, uh, that somebody hears that and goes, wow, I didn't realize that that's actually something that Republican governors are supporting. Well, you look at in Virginia in particular, I know Bob mcdonald has got some trouble now, but uh, obviously he did a lot, a lot in that area in Virginia. I think there's a lot of places that we've led the way in. I mean, you, I know you spend a lot of time talking about the VRA. <clears throat> My political hero, Jim Sensenbrenner, I mean, he was the person in 06 that came in and led the way mm -hmm. on the Voter Rights Act. When we did our March on Washington uh, event here last year, Jim Sensenbrenner went in front of the entire crowd in public and said, listen, I'm going to make sure that the Voter Rights Act is, is reinstated. And so, you know, I, I think that maybe part of our problem as a party is that we do a real lousy job bragging on the things that we do lead the way in. Uh, and we let the media and others define what we're all about.
But you, nothing's going to change unless I get a conduit and right. a defender in the community. And I'm not going to have that defender if I do nothing for four years except show up four months ahead of you time. You talked about the Voting Rights Act, uh, <clears throat> but your job is also made difficult when you have to deal with comments, issues that come up. And so uh, in Florida, uh, that, in a town hall meeting, you had a congress from there, uh, Ted Yoho, who was, was asked a question from, from a uh, voter about the Civil Rights Act. Uh, here's what he had to say. You know, this country grew through a lot of growing pains. We're growing through it again. Uh, and as, as we grow as a country and prosper, we're going to go through it again in the future. And that's why I'm so thankful for the Constitution, because it allows us to do that. Is it constitutional in the Civil Rights Act? I wish I could answer that 100%. I know a lot of things that were passed are not constitutional, but I know it's the law of the land. Uh, some of you may have been hard to hear that what he had talked about was uh, that uh, many parts of the Civil Rights Act are actually unconstitutional. That, look, if there are, um, of the, all the laws passed in the history of this country, uh, this is probably one of the laws that you can get pretty much support on. I don't care what aisle, I don't care what race. Doesn't this make your difficult hard when uh, you have a Republican congressman who pretty much says a lot of parts of the Civil Rights Act are unconstitutional? I mean, do you sit there and go, Seriously, Ken, are they getting the message of how do you communicate? Well, I think it's important that when we talk about the Voter Rights Act and we talk about what the Supreme Court has just recently said, that you specifically understand what exactly the issue is that the well, court is talking Rights about. Act. He, right. he was talking about the Civil Rights Act. <clears throat> right, well, that, that's right. right. And, 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 and to me, obviously, it's my job to be very clear on the issue when asked. And obviously the, the, the court has been clear on this issue and people have de died and bled and fought over this issue for many years. But I mean, that's why we, we talked about earlier, the fact that I think it's really important for our party and both parties, quite frankly, to immerse itself in all communities and diverse communities to learn where people are coming from so that you can get the experience to understand how to communicate but the about one, these issues. But the one hot issue that is at, on the minds of many African-Americans still is the issue <laughs> of voter suppression. And one of the things that I saw, Republicans will say, well, well I mean, no, when it comes that's to... That's kind of a loaded term. Well, no, no, but, no, 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 but I'll explain it. I hear right. Republicans talk about voter ID, which I under, but get, but when I see the cutting of voting on Sundays, the change of early voting hours. Uh, in Georgia, they cut early voting several years ago from 45 days to 21 days, just tried to cut it from 21 to 6 days. What's happening in North Carolina, even when you had uh, Colin Powell tell the governor of North Carolina, I'm sorry, this doesn't, doesn't make sense. That is still going to be well, tremendous let me tell you, some of these issues, I mean, you, you're, I don't want to get into state-by-state state analysis, but some of this stuff, as far as the, the voting hours, I know like in Wisconsin, it, there was, it, it was nothing sinister. The fact is there are some communities that can handle and pay for and have the people in place to do voting seven days a week. There are other communities that can't do it seven days a week. They can do it four days a week or five Does it days make a week. Sense to I mean, so you can't have disparate... I got you. Does it make sense, though, to all of a sudden you see the efforts to cut voting on Sundays when it's been working for years? It's not like there were any complaints, but all of a sudden it's... Well, I mean, for years we used to vote on one day, you know, and now we're voting for, you know, one month, two months ahead of time. You know, and I think it's really important for to have a consistent method by which, number one, hours are administered, days are consistent whether you live in Milwaukee or whether you live mm -hmm. up in La Crosse, Wisconsin, it has to be the same. Uh, but again, I go back to uh, the issue that, that, that you brought up earlier, which is the fact that people, when communicating about these issues, I think have to, have to understand, number one, the history, the audience, and I think right. that some of that stuff gets missed, and, and I'm, we're trying to do a better job of it, and I appreciate you inviting me to be on this program. Well, we are unfortunately out of time, and I went over time, but certainly let me know where you can come back. I will. So we can have a longer conversation, uh, because on that issue, I mean, that is still a critical issue, and even any, in many other black Republicans but I've talked to. But you understand, I mean, our, our world at the RNC is we're a campaign committee. You know, oh, so I got, we're, I got we're you. trying to put boots on the grand, ground and have a presence so that these relationships can be built and this stuff uh, can be better communicated in the community. But that voter issue is a huge, huge that. issue uh, that I still think is going to be a well, barrier. Let's come back and it. we can talk about it. All right, so let's book it. All right, All right I appreciate it. All right, Thanks so thank much. You. All right, folks, uh, I know I'm over time.